Welcome to our second module dedicated to quantum search algorithms. In this lecture, we'll discuss quantum amplification algorithms and in particular Grover's algorithm. The setup of Grover, Grover's algorithm is the following. We assume that we have a function uh, defined on indices from 1 to n to 0, 1 and a subset of 1 to n such that f of x evaluates to 1 if x is in S and 0 otherwise. With probability 50%, we can uh, find a marked element, so find an element in S with only square root n over m evaluations of f using a quantum computer. Now, with classical computers, and assuming here, for example, we have only one marked element, you would assume to have to go through at least half of the list of all possible elements to, in order to find a marked, the marked element with probably 50%. So here we're looking at a, a, at a very strong improvement over this uh, using quantum computers. So that's why Grover's algorithm is a really important milestone showing improvements that we cannot we think that is completely impossible to do with classical computers. Now, a lot uh, of problems can be rephrased as search problems, even those that you do not want to use Grover's algorithm to solve. For example, x squared, finding a solution to x squared minus one between one and n, well, that is in fact a search problem. We have, we do not want to use Grover's algorithm to solve this, of course, because uh, we have straight up formulae to find uh, a solution, but this is just to illustrate the fact that many, many practical problems could be rephrased as search problems. And in some of, in some cases, it, it just provides, Grover's algorithm provides performance in their resolution that are completely unattainable with classical computers. The starting point, of course, is applying the Hadamard gate to, uh, uh, to the zero state. What it produces is the uniform superposition of all possible answers to the problem. Uh, and so we would get a, uh, we would get the, the, a marked element just by measuring the state with probably m over n. So what we need to do is with the state as input, we need to boost the probability, boost the amplitude uh, of the coefficients that correspond to the basis states that we want to measure, which is the ones that correspond to the index of a marked element. So we're going to show what kind of circuit realizes this amplification of, of the coefficients that corresponds to the elements we want to we wanna measure, the ones where f of x equals one, while decreasing the uh, amplitude of the ones that we don't want to measure. One of the main ingredients to the search is the oracle, oracle is just a designated uh, terminology here, that implements f. So uh, we need, a, 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 we need a, a, a subset of the circuit, uh, uh, a piece of the circuit that does, that when applied to a basis state, it uh, returns the same state if that index, I mean, it corresponds to an index that is not an s, but it will multiply it by minus one if in fact it's an x uh, in s okay now for a uh, for a classical circuit we've seen i mean for f a classical function we have seen generic techniques to produce a circuit like this okay so we're not going to go over this again but in previous lectures we saw that in fact this is producing a circuit like this if f is known if a description of f is known as a classical function this is not a problem. Now, another important uh, uh, ingredient is the conditional phase shift. The conditional phase shift, we will return x if uh, x is zero, the zero state, and otherwise it will return minus x. Now, this is typically implemented uh, by having, uh, so x gates, then a lot of controls, so it's an n gate Toffoli, uh, uh, n qubit Toffoli gate, and then here is your target. And by doing this circuit, 
we don't quite get what we want. But what we get is a circuit that turns zero into minus zero and everything else into itself. And with this circuit, we are in fact uh, uh, we are in fact implementing minus times the conditional phase shift uh, uh, operator. Now what we've seen before is that if two operators are equal up to what we call global phase, so in particular minus one is a global phase, then they, the, the, the difference does not impact the final measurement. So this is why this conditional phase shift is typically implemented like this with elementary gates. Now, that combined with uh, the Hanamar gates gives us what we call inversion about the mean. So what it means is, if you have this as an input state, what it, transfor it transforms it into this, uh, where alpha denotes uh, uh, the average here. So what we have is, uh, uh, we have an action that will uh, replace every coefficient by two times the average minus that coefficient. Now, the proof of this is in the class notes. Let's just see how it works out on an example. So in this example, alpha, the, the mean, is 1 over 4 times the sum 1 half plus 1 half plus 1 half minus 1 half, which is 1 over 4. Now, if we're going to, so looking at, for example, the coefficient of either 0 or 1 or 2 after the transformation, what we get is minus, so minus alpha x, so minus 1 half in this case, plus uh, two times the average, which in our case, of course, is one four. So that's one half minus one half, which is zero. And then on the other hand, the coefficient of three is going to be minus times minus one half. So one half plus two times one fourth, which is one. So we will turn this into the state three. Now, notice the state 3 had a minus sign, and that's what made it amplified after, what's amplified it after uh, the inversion about the mean, while the others all decreased. And that is really the basis of Grover's algorithm, because prior to the inversion about the mean, there is this oracle call that will multiply by minus 1 the marked elements uh, in the superposition. And then the inversion of the mean is going to do this. So this is what our Grover iterate, one iteration of Grover's algorithm is going to look like. So it has the inversion of the mean here. And then prior to that, the call to the oracle to uh, send a minus one to all the marked elements. And then uh, the inversion of the mean is there to amplify their ampl amplitude. Now, visually, what does it look like is we start with a uniform superposition here of every possible answer. Then the, the, the oracle is going to, here we see the case of one marked element. So the oracle is going to multiply by minus one uh, the marked elements. Okay, so here we represent, you know that, of course, uh, all coefficients are real throughout the co throughout the algorithm, which is a very special case because in quantum algorithms coefficients can be complex. So here they're very easy to visually represent, and we see that after the oracle call, only one element has a negative uh, has a negative coefficient, and then after the inversion about the mean, this coefficient gets amplified while all the others fall below the average. Okay, so that's really uh, intuitively what's happening. Now we need to, in order to figure out how many times we need to uh, implement so that Grover iterates is given to us uh, most uh, easily, it's most easily seen when we rephrase uh, the Grover iteration as a rotation in a particular uh, space. So the space in question is given by 
Uh, so the first vector is the uniform superposition of all the x's in S, and the other one is uh, x is not in S, and the other one is the uniform superposition of all the x's that are in S. And in this basis, we can say that the the, the state, the original state psi, which is the uniform superposition over all possible measurements, is given by cos theta over two times the first basis element plus sine theta over two times the second basis element. So this is, in this space, this is our original state, okay? Now, uh, we will show it on only one basis state, but we can show, uh, and that's the full proof is in the notes, we'll, we'll do half of it in the next slide, that the uh, action of G in this particular space, in the span of alpha beta, is a rotation of angle theta. Now, what is the objective of Grover's algorithm? We want to measure a marked element. So we want to measure an X that is an S. So how, what are we trying to do by applying rotations of, of angle theta? We're trying to get clo as close as possible to the state that is given just by beta because it's the uniform superposition of all possible, uh, of all X's in S. So what we want to do is to bring our states as close as possible to uh, the state, the, the, the vector beta. And we want to do that by rot successive rotations of angle theta, starting with a vector that makes an angle theta over two with the uh, 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 alpha axis. And you want to get as close to, as possible to uh, the beta axis. So you want to add angles uh, uh, to add theta as many as many times as needed to get as close as possible to pi over 2 okay now let's see on one of the basis states so this is g times alpha let's see how g times alpha is is uh, uh, is given by uh, uh, the proper rotation action on alpha beta so first Notice, of course, that uh, G is 2 Psi minus identity times OF, but OF acts trivially on the X's that are not in S. So you can already forget about OF here and focus on, on uh, uh, the action of 2 Psi minus identity. So this uh, is going to be equal to 1 over square roots n minus m times uh, 2, so as we just said, 2 times psi minus identity times the sum over x not in s of x. Okay, now we're going to uh, we're going to start expanding this sum. So what we have here, leaving for now one over square root n minus m outside, what we will get is two. Um, so what we get here is two over square root n times psi times the dot product of psi and, and the sum over x not in s. So that's simply the cardinality of, of, of the complement of s. So that is here n minus m. Okay. And then still minus the sum of x not in s of x. Okay. Now, we can rewrite our psi as the uniform superposition of all possible answers. So we have 1 over square roots n minus m times 2, two times n minus m divided by n times the sum over all possible x's minus the sum over x not in s of x. 
Now, what we want next is to rewrite this into two sums, one going over x's in s and the other one going over x's not in s. So we need to split this term uh, in order to make this happen, okay? Because then we want to have an expression of the answer in the span of alpha beta, okay? So what do we have? We have one over square root n minus m, times, so this first term here is going to be 2n minus m over n times the sum over x's in s of x. And then we have, we transfer uh, the rest to the other sum, and then we will get, therefore, 2 times n minus m divided by n minus 1 multiplied by the sum of x not in s of x. Now we want to make the normalization factors appear uh, in order to properly uh, express the sum in terms of alpha beta. So we need to now distribute this 1 over square root n minus m. So what do we get? We get 2 times square root n minus m divided by n times uh, and then we'll do this artificial uh, you know artificially appear we'll make square root m artificially appear here times the sum oops my apologies times the sum of x in s of x and then here, we don't need to really that. That is the normalization factor that we wanted. So we can keep this. So 2 times n minus m divided by n minus 1 times 1 over square root n minus m sum over x is not in s of x. And this is exactly alpha this is exactly beta and doing a little uh, trigonometry what we find is because of the definition of cos theta and sine theta this is cos theta and I mean we had uh, cos theta over 2 and sine theta over 2 defined in the previous slide and doing the, the, the half angle using the half angle formulae what you get is that this is sine theta. So we have a sine theta times beta plus cos theta times alpha, which is exactly the image of, of the rotation on the first basis vector, the rotation of angle uh, theta. And then uh, we would get exactly um, uh, the same, I mean, that g times beta is given by minus sine theta alpha plus cos theta beta if we were to uh, carry those computations. This is done in the class notes. Now, how many iterations are needed noting, noting, noting this? Well, like I said before, we want to get as close as possible to uh, an angle of pi over 2. And after k iteration, this is the kind of angle that we have. And so hoping that you know, making it as close as possible to pi over 2 means that you need uh, that many operations, okay? And the success probability here in that particular case is going to be guaranteed to be greater than one half. Now, one important note here is that we need to know how many uh, marked elements we have using this uh, plain uh, Grover search. Because if you don't, how many times exactly do you think you have to apply Grover? Well, um, one way you could you could think of it is oh I, what what if I overshoot um, you know more Grover probably uh, would guarantee the the result in fact it's complete opposite here because once you missed your target of pi over two so you'll never get exactly uh, uh, exactly to pi over two but at least we'll get to an angle that such that the square of the sine is going to be greater than one half but then if you go too far then it will start decreasing the probability of, of, uh, of measuring a marked element. 
up to the point that if you continue, you'll even go full circle and go back to where you started. Okay, so it's important to calibrate the number of iterations of the Grover um, uh, of the Grover iterates in order to to get close to the angle that we want. Now, amplitude amplification is the generalization of Grover's algorithm. Basically, it can be seen as a replacement of the Hadamard gates by an operator A, where um, so the measurement of A yields an element in S with probability P. Now, of course, we assume that that P has got to be greater than one half, uh, sorry, uh, greater than, uh, um, so better than uh, uh, one over N, because otherwise uh, we would be using uh, the Hadamard transform, okay? So um, we, we, we assume that we know better, okay? So this is really the, 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 the postulate here. We assume that we know better than just to um, uh, draw an element uniformly at random. And we want to then use this sort of uh, a Grover uh, structure, this Grover framework, in order to, uh, to boost this probability of measuring the marked elements. So what we're doing here is replacing, you see here, like there was an H and there was an H, and we're replacing H by A. Notice that, of course, A dagger, uh, before in the um, um, uh, uh, inversion about the mean, uh, we had an H, but we, we, what we meant was to have H dagger, okay? So if you have, but H and is self-inverse. So here, if we replace the H's by A's, uh, what we get is, and of course, replacing the uniform superposition of all possible answers by A times zero, and we call that Psi to highlight the similarities between the two methods, then we have a quantum amplification iterate that looks like Grover, okay, with this replacement. And, um, and then, so we have a sort of inversion about the mean as well. And then we have uh, basically all the, the same behavior. So in particular, we got a rotation, but this time we have uh, the angle is given by this probability P. So previously, of course, our probability uh, was m over n, or uh, uh, in the case of m marked elements, here it's given by the particular shape of, of the action of the, our given operator a on the, the zero state, okay? And our Grover, uh, sorry, our um, quantum amplification algorithm is going to act like a rotation, and of course you can calculate the number of iterations that are needed just the same way. The difference, of course, being that now we have to worry about what is the probability P uh, of measuring a marked element after acting with the operator A on the zero vector, okay? So this concludes our module on quantum search, which is a very important milestone in quantum algorithms because it really highlights the superiority of quantum algorithms for solving certain problems. Uh, in, in, with a level of efficacy that, that is uh, out of the reach of, of classical computers. Thank you.